What's up guys? Today we are talking retouching and these plugins by Retouch for me. Now I've seen these out there on the web already and you probably have seen other videos. I'm going to tell you something. These plugins are friggin' awesome, especially if you're doing portrait photography and you need to clean up somebody's skin. Now I know there's going to be talks about, oh, I want to keep it all natural or, you know, how much is too much. I get you. These plugins do an amazing job. Now, again, you can get heavy handed with them, but they maintain the skin texture, the overall look. So keep somebody that's 45 looking 45, not 45 looking 22. Now here in Asia, they like to make everybody look really, really young. That's the whole K-pop craze. That's another topic for another day. But let's jump into Photoshop and Lightroom and let's take a look at how these plugins work. And by the way, I'll tell you at the end of this video, there is a special discount for you guys if you think these plugins are for you. So let's get down to it. I'm in Lightroom CC. I'm going to actually edit these images in Photoshop via the plugin. Now you can do these as a standalone app that you can download from Touch for me, or you can do it as a plugin. Now I have a few tools here. I have Heal, Dodge and Burn. I have a tool to remove the creases in fabric and also color match, which is something new that they have. If you want to match a certain image in terms of the color grade, you can do that. And also some sort of background cleanup, but I don't necessarily shoot on plain background, so that doesn't really apply here. But let's go into the heal and dodge and burn tools first, because these are the most, I think the most impressive out of the tools that I've used thus far. There's a lot of them on the website, but these are really good. Case in point, let's go to this gentleman here. And you know, he's got some marks on his face. It does a pretty decent skin, but it's showing some age and showing a little bit of tiredness, but wait till we're done with this. Let's go into Photoshop and let's edit this real quick here. And now let's go into the retouch for me heal tool. First and foremost, this is a plugin. It takes a little bit of time to start up. I'm using the Mac studio M2 Mac. So I've got some power behind this and I'm using it on half length portrait. You can do full length portrait, you can do close up portrait, and you can do auto. In terms of the strength of the healing, depends on where you want to go. If you leave it on auto, sometimes it doesn't do all the imperfections that you want it to do. So you got to play around with these to find out what works best here. So half length is working really well here. Cleaned up a lot already. Here was original, and here's after. Original, after. Now there's some bumps right here along the way that aren't perfect, but let's. Let's try auto. Let's see what auto does. Uh, not as good. Half length is the way to go. Now, here's something to know about the heel plug in here. When you click on the brush, you're seeing these are the spots it's removed. Now, let's say there's some spots here I want to clean up as well. You can't do it. This plugin only works on what it detects, not what you detect. So the only reason you have a brush and eraser tool here is because let's say it's cleaning up something you don't want to clean up over here. And then you go back, oh, wait a second. I actually want that back. So then highlight and put it back in there. That's the only way these tools work, okay? And of course, then you want to go increase the dimension of the brush. You can do that here. Hit apply. And there we have it. Now, with this plugin, you can run it multiple times and sometimes it detects more on the second and third try. Let's try it again. Okay, let's zoom in to see if it's changed anything. Not really. It's all about the same. So this is the max that this plugin is going to do for this. However, this is where dodge and burn comes into play. This tool blew my mind when I saw it work because, I mean, I've used high frequency separation before editing portraits. This is on another level. And they also have a high frequency plugin as well. Look at that. Now, this has gone a little heavy handed. Let's bring it down to zero to see the beginning. And we can bring it to about 98 thereabouts. But look at that how much it's changed. Again, now you have this warmth tool here, so you can adjust the warmth if you need to, but sometimes you don't have to. I mean, you could probably warm it up a little bit with the skin, but he's already really good where it's highlighting it. Let's take a look where it's more severe. Under the eyes, of course, around the cheek area. Click back here, hit apply. That's fantastic. Let's just zoom in on this. Look at the skin texture here. We're still maintaining the lines underneath the eyes. Everything is still there. It's not like these apps that you use on a smartphone that just smooth and everything out and everybody looks like a porcelain doll. No, you're still maintaining the texture. So it still looks natural, which is the most important. And this is a high resolution image, okay? Now it's not perfect. There are some spots here. This is where the uh, remove tool by Photoshop is gonna do its magic. There you go, cleaned up. This is before and this is after. Before and after. That's a big change. And that took less than five minutes. Now, normally for something like this, that could take anywhere from 20, 30 minutes, even longer, depending how much you have to do. But that took that little of time to get this result is pretty impressive. Let me show you now on a female what it looks like, because a lot of times, you know, the ladies want to look as good as possible too. This is my partner here. And I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I'm just giving this as an example. This was taken, by the way, with the GFX 100 2, 100 megapixel medium format image here. So in terms of the detail, how well this resolves or how, how well it works with a high resolution image, let's see it right now. We're going to zoom in on this. Look at the detail on this. 
100 megapixels. I mean, you're going to see detail for days. Now, normally on high resolution images, this is a pain in the butt to edit because you see everything. Go to heal. Give it a second here. Large image. Let's zoom in. Now it's done a pretty decent job here. This is original. This is after. Original, after. Now let's remove the bumps around underneath her chin here, around the eye area here, around the nose. It's done a pretty, pretty good job. I can try different methods here at the bottom, auto, close up, whatever the case may be, see what works the best. I do find that medium portrait does seem to work the best for the most part. Again, we're zooming in on this. All the detail is still there. You can't tell these spots were removed. It is that clean. Now, if I want to run it again, just to see if there's anything else it'll pick up, let's do that one more time. Let's see here. Did it remove anything else? Not really. I think that's pretty much it. Let's move into dodge and burn. Now, you're noticing under her eyes, she's a little bit tired this morning when I was taking this image. So let's see what dodge and burn does, especially under the eye area. Because for a lot of ladies out there, and for guys too, they want to look as fresh as possible, but still look natural. How about this? This is at 98% and look at the difference right there. Damn, that's good. Wow. Let's pump it up a little bit more. Let's see. We want to clean just that because uh, I noticed that left eye there could be underneath the eye could be a little bit cleaner. Look at that. Zoom in. That's friggin' awesome. The skin texture is still there. Now it's not perfect, right? There are some, you know, slight imperfections here that we're seeing a little bit of hairs that hasn't picked up, you know, some small fine hairs around the face, maybe a little bit of, you know, white spots we might get around the nose area. Again, when you're retouching these small things, if you're putting this on social media, nobody's going to go up this close and see these things. But if you are going to be doing this for print, you're doing this for a commercial work, these small things do make a difference. With this new remove tool by Photoshop, it does make things a lot better. Look at that. There's more to do with this image. I could, in terms of saturation to the lips, I could enhance the eyes a little bit, but already right there, that is a huge difference in under five minutes. This would have taken me a long time to do this stuff. Not that long because she's got good skin, but you know what I mean? It would have taken me at least 20, 30 minutes to do. Under five minutes, this plugin did that. And if you want to see the before and after, this is before and that's after. That's impressive. All right. Working with clothing is very, very tricky. It takes a lot of work. You know, high frequency separation can help, but there's a lot that comes into play with this. This plugin does a decent job in terms of fabric. It's not perfect. And I'll show you some of the, the pros and cons to it and also how you can work around it. But let me uh, give you a good example here. Let's bring this into Photoshop again. All right. So now we're going to go into retouch for me for fabric. Suit, you know, it's a hot day in Singapore. There's some wrinkles there. How can this work with a suit, for example? Because a lot of times you're going to be shooting men's suits or dresses. These things are going to come into play. Now it's assessing the entire image here. And this is where there's some pros and some cons in it to this. And I'll show you right now. Let's dive in a little bit here. So at 132, you're seeing some green coming into play here. Now let's go back to original. And now let's start bringing it up here. Now it's doing a decent job, a decent job. You're seeing some red and some green coming into play here. This looks pretty good for the most part, but you're getting that red and green that really plays tricks with the color here. So this is where you're still going to have to do some editing after the fact. But in terms of the overall look, I would say 122, hit apply. It's done a great job in terms of removing the uh, the wrinkles out of the jacket right here and everywhere else, but you're still getting some green and purple halos here. Camera off filter, you can use whatever tool you want to go into. And I desaturated the suit to kind of match the gray and get rid of the green and the red. Again, you can color match how you want to do that. It looks a lot better. And I'll show you what the final image of Jimmy looks like right here. That's one of the challenges with this tool. It does work better with blue suits. Let me show you what that looks like right now. So this on a blue suit works a lot better. Look at that. That's fantastic. It's removed a lot of the wrinkles. It softened it right up, really natural. And again, because the suit has blue in it already, that green and red kind of match better with blue than it does with gray or with black. So that's something to keep in mind here. Again, your mileage may vary on this, but it does give you a good starting point. I mean, I use this image already for my Instagram and it looks fantastic. Now, again, if you're a professional retoucher, you can go even further with this, especially if you're gonna be showing this clothing for a catalog or for a billboard or whatever the case may be. But right there for a plugin like this in a couple clicks 
That's pretty impressive. All right, so now we're gonna go into color match. Now, this is a new tool by Retouch for me that allows you to sort of match the color grade of another image that you have. Let's say you're doing a series of images and you shot them on different locations, different days, but you wanna match everything together for a carousel post, or let's say it's for a catalog. This is a great way to do this. This tool is a little bit slow in terms of performance right now. It's gotten better from the recent update. It's still a little bit slow, but you're gonna see how it works right now. Let's go to color match. Now, it wants to load a reference image here. So what I'm going to do is I've got a series of reference images on my desktop. Famous movie, Doom. Love the color grading. Now, this is a little bit heavy handed on terms of how it first captures the color. You can adjust this with the luminance bar here. As you can see, it's a little bit slow in terms of its performance, but you can play around with this. The color is a little bit too saturated. You might want to bring that down a bit. You can smoothen it out if you want to do this. And if you want to blend it a little bit less, See how it stutters a bit? That's something on this plugin. It was worse on the previous update. Now on the most recent update, it's still, it's a bit better, but it's a bit slow. So hopefully they can fix this in a future firmware. There we have a sort of a very similar look in terms of the color tone, in terms of the skin tone, how everything renders. And if I want to apply it, I apply it. And there we have it. Of course, I can do all the whole retouching, healing, dodge and burn, all that kind of stuff as well. But what's nice about this app, especially is if you want to export this as a LUT to use for video, you can do that. If you want to export as a LUT to use for other applications, Photoshop or even Lightroom Classic, you can do that as well. So that way you can color match your images all the way through and it makes it a lot easier. And especially for video, if you want a certain look to your video out there, you're shooting a log and you say, look, I want it to look like this. Now you have a reference point. You can get that look and get at least close to it. I like this a lot. I'm just hoping that the plugin would be a little bit smoother overall in terms of performance, but I'm sure they'll update it in the near future. Now there's a lot of plugins on Retouch for me, by the way, that you can use. I'm just showing a few of them that they sent over to me to try out. I'm very happy with the heel, the dodge and burn, the fabric, kind of removing the wrinkles in the fabric for the most part. Again, depending on the color of fabric, it may be a bit challenging. Grays, blacks are hit and miss. Blue seems to work best in my personal opinion. It may be a little bit of red, but again, your mileage may vary, but it's a good starting point. I think these are great tools, man. And I think for a lot of people out there that are getting into retouching, or maybe you're a professional, but you just want to speed up your workflow, these are worth the investment. They're not cheap plugins. Again, and there's a lot of computational work going in there. AI, if you want to call it that, whatever. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes making these look as natural as possible, but they do a fan fantastic job. Anyway, Retouch for Me is also offering you guys 20% off any of the plugins that they have. There's a code I'll put right here at the bottom of the screen here or in my description. You can click on that. And if you do want to pick up any of those plugins, that'll also help support my channel as well. But guys, I wouldn't be doing this video if I didn't think these were good. The results are pretty damn impressive. Anyway, those are my thoughts on these plugins by Retouch for Me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Any questions you have, I'll try to answer them for you guys. Once again, thanks for the support, and I will chat to you guys very, very soon. Take care.